Hi, this is Stuart Weems, and thanks for listening to the Investopoly podcast. My goal is to give you simple, easy to understand strategies, insights, and tips to help you master the game of building wealth. And in this episode, I'd like to talk about the property market and my price predictions, uh, that is for the shorter term, uh, in particular next year 2019. And it might surprise you that I'm an outlier. I actually think uh, we'll either see a sideways movement. Um, or price appreciation, particularly in some uh, some particular geographical locations, as opposed to further falls in property prices in 2019. And on that basis, I think we're either very close to the bottom or at the bottom already in terms of this uh, cycle. Now, this uh, prediction is notably different from most market commentators, which are expecting somewhere between 5 and 15% and even in some cases 20% uh, price falls from here. In fact, uh, Shane Oliver, uh, AMP's chief economist, uh, came out last week and said he thinks prices will fall a further 15% from here. So I am definitely an outlier uh, in in the whole prediction race. And it's a good segue to talk about predictions because um, uh, Professor Philip Tetlock in 2003 completed the longest longitudinal study of predictions over a 25-year period. He followed over 300 expert predictors uh, and and really analysed, um, retrospectively analysed, 82,000 different predictions that these 300 experts made over that 25-year period. And he concluded that predictions were only slightly more accurate than random guesses, that is, slightly more accurate than a coin toss. And interestingly, experts with a greater media profile tended to do worse compared to their relatively unknown peers. Uh, so that is, uh, Shane Oliver, the AMP uh, chief economist, has a much bigger media profile than I do. Uh, so maybe uh, what that insight suggests is that you should listen to me and not and not Shane Oliver. Obviously, I'm, I'm being facetious there. But the point is that really predictions are, are relatively worthless. I mean, it makes t- typically for good conversation or makes for good media commentary and so forth. But the problem with predictions is that they're dangerous. They're dangerous because they promote you to think short-term and make short-term decisions based on these shorter-term predictions. And in my book, Investopoly, I talk about really the number one, the first rule I talk about in terms of um, nailing your finances is really to make long-term uh, decision. So really what prices, uh, property prices do over the next one, two or three years is really meaningless if you're planning to hold the property for many decades. Um, really what the most important thing is what will prices do over the next 10 or 20 years or 30 years. Um, and in the shorter term, prices are driven by sentiment. That's true in the stock market and the property market. In the long run, prices are driven by fundamentals. So, and I've, I've spoken about before that um, uh, that timing has virtually no impact on your longer term returns. So if you buy at the peak of the market or bottom of the market uh, is less important. It's more important about the quality of the asset you're buying in the long run uh, will uh, will really come to fore. So without further ado, why do I think we're at the bottom of the market already? Well, I think two things are going to happen next year and I think those two things will stimulate or at least underpin property prices. The first one is I think credit will start to loosen. Um, I read with great interest Philip Lowe, which is the governor of RBA, his comments uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I quote, A few years ago, credit standards were way too loose. There's been a correction of that, but I'm starting to be a bit concerned that the pendulum might have swung too far in the other way. He goes on to say things like um, that the, the banks need to be lending with the expectation that some borrowers will default. And if, if banks are lending on the, on the basis that they want zero default rates, that's not good for the economy, and in the long run, the economy will suffer. The, the point I get um, from these comments is this is the first signal from the government that credit is way too tight. And to my mind, there is no doubt that credit is way too tight. There's no doubt that it will have, if it doesn't change, negative impacts on the economy. It doesn't necessarily show in, through in all the macro data, which is interesting. It might take a bit of time to do that. Um, but I think in an environment, uh, in an election year, no doubt, um, there's, there's uh, nothing uh, worse 
uh, for an uh, uh, um, incumbent government to be uh, in an election campaign where there's falling house prices. And so if they're getting some signs from uh, independent parties like the RBA that you know credit is maybe too tight, um, I think the government's going to take the opportunity to sort of loosen that up a little bit and maybe APRA can take their foot off the lenders and say, hang on, guys, we've gone too far the other way. I think that'll happen next year. And I think that'll happen next year because practically it is too tight, but also um, because the government would like to turn that property market around and say, look, look at us. Uh, we actually had a, a, a measured soft landing uh, to, to curb the, the property price growth that was too high, particularly in Sydney, for a period of time. So I predict that credit will loosen. Uh, not We won't go back to where we used to be, not even close, but it will loosen from here. The second thing I think that will stimulate the market is the ALP's tax policies. So but given the Victorian state election results, I think that most people agree that really the the Labor Party is really in the prime seat to win the election next year. Um, and, and, you know, so they'd have to do something, I would imagine, have to do something really silly uh, for that not to be the case. Um, now, obviously, the AOP policies are to quarantine negative gearing and to increase the capital gains tax rate by 50%. Now, negative gearing gets a lot of press and it's got a lot of press. But really, um, the increase in capital gains tax, particularly if you're going to hold the property for longer term, has a greater longer term financial impact. But, you know, uh, we're all humans and uh, we tend to be very short sighted with these things. So, so negative gearing has got most of the attention. Um, but the problem is that these changes won't occur until what they say is a yet-to-be-determined date. Now, that yet-to-be-determined date is probably after they win the election, probably when they get the, the legislation enacted. Um, and uh, the, the, the issue with that is between now, which is now as in today, when we think, or at least most people's view would be the ALP is going to win and this is what we're going to have to live with, and when those um, actual rules come into force, people are going to start to be a bit spooked and think, well, maybe we need to get into the property market so we can lock in that negative gearing benefit and also lock in the lower capital gains tax rate. And I think this creates a window of opportunity for people to, to make those investments. Um, and I think that window of opportunity will really come into the forefront of people's minds in 2019. As the election has been talked about, as the media is going to talk about a little bit more, that sense of urgency will start to come into play and people will want to get into that property market. Now, I don't necessarily think that's a good thing. I think people are probably reacting to short-term issues and, and, and being enticed into making what very long-term financial decisions that they're going to have to live with. So whether they should be jumping into the market really depends on their situation. I don't think they should necessarily be promoted just because of these tax benefits. Um, but it really does concern me for, for two reasons. Firstly, it's an artificial stimulation, and artificial stimulations distort property prices or distort, distort market prices, which happened uh, when the Run, Rudd government uh, doubled the first homeowners grant during the GFC around 2009. Um, and secondly, as I said, I'm worried that investors are going to rush into getting investment and investment property or properties without a lot of thought into whether it makes a sound investment decision and whether they've got a strategy behind it. But those two things, I think, will underpin the property market and will at least stem further falls and might actually result over the course of the calendar year in 2019, some price appreciation. Now, what could go wrong? Well, obviously my prediction would change if those things don't occur. If the government doesn't loosen um, credit policy or if the ALP, uh, for example, comes out and says, well, from today that my leg their legislation is going to apply, so they apply it retrospectively and really close that um, window. Uh, so if my prediction is correct, what should you do? Well, probably not much, except for the fact that um, maybe if you are considering investing in property over the next couple of years, that maybe you should uh, actually do it before the ALP gets into power, before these rules come into force, uh, so that you can lock in that negative gearing or at least preserve that negative gearing benefit and the, capital, the lower capital gains tax rate. I'm not suggesting that we should have knee-jerk reactions to this, um, but what I'm suggesting is that... Uh, um, uh, well, maybe there is a, a actual a, a reasonable window of opportunity for people that have a, a well thought out long term investment strategy. 
some people are saying, look, maybe why should you invest in property now? Because when the ALP gets in, uh, quarantine negative gearing won't property prices fall. Uh, well, m- maybe, but um, uh, I won't. I don't think the falls will be universal, and I think the falls will almost certainly, particularly with investment grade assets, be a very short term thing. So, if you think about property prices and what they've done since 19, uh, 1980, around about ten percent growth uh, in median prices, and over that time, we've had negative gearing actually being uh, removed. We've had the introduction of capital gains tax. Um, GST, uh, lots of uh, you know market crashes, GFCs, very high interest rates. The market seen everything, and at the end of the day, the fundamentals rise to the top. So uh, the prices, the the properties that will probably see a lot of price depreciation are typically non investment grade assets. Uh, so uh, whether you should jump in or whether you should reserve or sit on the sidelines to property uh, falls in value, I think. Uh, is only really premised if you're going to buy a a non-investment grade asset. Uh, So there you go. There's my prediction for 2019 for the uh, residential property market. In the fullness of time, we'll see whether my prediction has been correct. And uh, But anyway, a bit of food for thought. Until next week, bye for now.